Hello guys, in this video we are going to look at our very first example of both our video series on mechanics as well as our video series on electrodynamics because uh, this problem combines our knowledge of both mechanics as well as electrodynamics whatever we have learned so far and also this is a real life problem which, which makes it even more interesting right so this is our first example okay and uh, in this example we are going to look into the ionosphere okay so what is the ionosphere the ionosphere is a region of uh, electrically neutral gas composed of positively charged ions and negatively charged electrons. That surrounds the Earth. at a height of approximately 200 kilometers right now uh, there is an event right happening in the sun which is known as the solar wind and sometimes it is not a wind but it becomes a storm right where the sun what happens is it ejects a heavy amount of radiation which consists of charged ions and gamma rays and x-rays if you don't know what gamma rays are you might you will surely know what x-rays x-rays and gamma rays are just type of photons type of light it is a type of light which are very which is very energetic they have a huge amount of energy present in them All right and uh, when this kind of a radiations you know that earth has a magnetic field right around it this is the earth's magnetic field right so when these radiations try to pass through this magnetic field the charged radiations will be dragged by the magnetic field towards the south north and south pole of this uh, of the earth right whereas the neutral ones the gamma rays x rays these are photons okay they are light and light is neutral like uh, right they don't have any charge so they are ju they are just going to pass through the magnetic field but the main point is that the earth has ionosphere around it and these radiations the from the solar wind or the solar storm is going to interact with the various gases present in the ionosphere right and what are these the uh, gases they could be uh, these gases are mostly oxygen and nitrogen okay so if you uh, you should know that a photon right light consists of an electric field okay which oscillates in time okay so the light consists of an electric field 
which oscillates in time. What uh, do I mean oscillates in time? That means uh, uh, that uh, the electric field is varying as a sine function, right? You know, sine omega t. So electric fields can also vary with time, right? And uh, if the electric field is uh, varies as a sine function or a cos function, or uh, then uh, these two written of matrix functions, the sine function and the cos function, then we say that the electric field is oscillatory in time, right? It oscillates in time. In fact, any particle whose position or anything which varies as a sine or a cos function, we say that uh, it is showing some kind of oscillatory motion, right? And what do I mean by oscillatory motion? That means if this is the particle, then it will oscillate back and forth. It is going to first travel over here. Then it is going to return to its original position, go down, right? We are going to look into this uh, in more detail when we uh, discuss simple harmonic motion in our uh, uh, future videos, but that is not very important for this video. You can understand it anyways. You just have to know that the electric field is uh, varies as a function of time as a sine function right of time okay and now these atoms right as i've told you these atoms contain electron right this is the nucleus and this atom contains uh, a lot of electrons around it okay so this electric field is going to influence the electrons. How? Because in my previous video on electrodynamics, I've explained to you the Coulomb's law and how the Coulomb's law, the Coulomb's force is related to the electric field. So this electric field is going to apply a force on the electron and we have to analyze the motion of the electrons in that force. Basically, we have to find how the position of the electron will change with time in that electric field, okay? So we know that Coulomb's force is equal to E times uh, electric field, actually with a minus sign because the charge on the electron is minus E, right? So minus E is the charge on the electron. Okay. And from Newton's third law, now we are going to see how we can com uh, combine our knowledge, whatever we have of the various disciplines in physics, into a simple, pro into a single problem, right? So, F is equal to M A by Newton's second law is equal to minus E. Okay. And A will then become, if I take mass in the denominator, E by M, and electric field is equal to E naught sine omega T, as we have just learned. Right? Now I'm just going to call uh, this minus E by M. Uh, into E naught as A naught. So I'm just going to call A naught equal to minus E by A naught by M. Can you see why did I choose the it to call it A naught? Because you can see this has the dimension of the electric field A naught because that is the amplitude, right? E naught is nothing but the maximum uh, distance up to which uh, this electric field can go, this height, right? That is E naught. And it has the uh, dimensions of electric field because sine does not have any dimension. Any trigonometric function does not have dimension. So uh, E naught have, will have the same dimension as the electric field. So this is something like the charge of the electron multiplied by the electric field, which is the Coulomb force, something like a Coulomb force divided by the mass. So this is some. This A naught will have the dimensions of uh, acceleration. So this will become. A naught sine omega t, right? So you can see that the acceleration of the electron is also oscillating uh, with respect to 
time, right? With the same frequency. This omega is nothing but the angular frequency. Frequency. Which is the a constant, right? It is constant in time. But basically, every if uh, you know that each every wave has a frequency, and angular frequency is related to frequency as two pi f, right? This is normal frequency. This is a frequency. Okay. And angular frequency is related to frequency like this. So this is also going to uh, the acceleration of the electron is also going to oscillate with the same frequency. Okay, and that is going to give us a very interesting result. So stay tuned, right? Uh, next, we are going to apply our most important equations that we had learned in kinematics, which is v of t is equal to v naught plus integrals from 0 to t right a of t prime dt prime so here i am calling it t prime because it does not really matter it just represents time right so it does not matter you call t prime t or whatever okay next uh, we get v naught plus integral 0 to t and we are going to substitute a value of a of t which is what a naught sine omega dt sine omega t prime i will say does not really matter right i'm calling it instead of a of t i'll call it a of t prime again it just represents time so it does not really matter so i will get v naught plus now this a naught is a constant right it is not changing with time so i'm just going to take it out of the integration and integration of sine omega t is minus cos omega t so i will get a minus cos omega t prime divided by omega from 0 to t right this minus so i can take minus 1 by omega out so i will get b naught minus a naught by omega and for substituting t i will get cos omega instead of t prime i'm going to substitute t so i will get cos omega t minus instead of t prime i'm going to substitute zero and omega multiplied by zero will become uh, zero and cos of zero is uh, well one so i will get a one which is cos of zero so first i substitute the upper limit and then i substitute the lower limit as i've explained to you in my previous videos right so we get an equation of this form. Next, we are going to analyze how the position is go to, going to change with time. R of t, right? Because we are not really dealing in the x-axis, we are going to deal in general in three dimensions. So I'll call it R of t. It will become, uh, from my previous videos on kinematics, we know it is R naught plus zero to t v of t dt. Right here, you can see that we ja can't just uh, apply v naught is equal to v is equal to v naught plus uh, uh, a t, or we can't uh, write s is equal to u t plus half a t square. We don't. We can't apply that because the acceleration of the electrons are changing with respect to time. So in these kind of problems, you have to be very careful. Okay. So I will get R naught plus uh, integral from zero to t. V v of t is equal to v naught minus. I'll take this a naught by omega inside the bracket. So I will get plus a naught by omega. Okay. So that this term as a whole is a constant in time. You can see minus a naught by omega cos omega t prime. I'll call it T prime. I'll call it R of, uh, I can call it T prime or T again. Okay, so it does not really matter. I'll call it T prime now into DT prime. Okay, because at the end of the day, I want T substituted instead of T prime. So it does not really matter. Okay. So I'm going to get R naught plus. Now this term as a whole is a constant. Okay. This is the whole bracket, right? So this term as a whole is a constant, this one. And uh, so it is going to get, come out of the integral. So I will get V naught plus A naught by omega 
इंटीग्रल जीरो टू टी डी टी प्राइम माइनस इंटीग्रल जीरो टू टी माइनस ए नॉट बाय ओमेगा बिकॉज ए नॉट बाय ओमेगा इज अ कॉन्स्टेंट ओवर इन टाइम एंड इंटीग्रेशन ऑफ कॉस ओमेगा टी प्राइम इज साइन ओमेगा टी प्राइम ओके सो यू कैन इजिली सी हाउ इंटीग्रेशन इज कम्प्लीट इज द ऑपोजिट ऑफ डिफरेंट सोशन सो दिस इज साइन ओमेगा टी प्राइम डिवाइडेड बाय ओमेगा ओके फ्रॉम जीरो टू टी राइट सो आई एम गोइंग टू गेट आर नॉट प्लस वे नॉट प्लस ए नॉट ओमेगा into time t minus from here from my previous video you know how we get that and uh, a not by omega so instead uh, omega square i will get i will take this omega out because it is a constant and then instead of t prime first i'm going to substitute t so i get sin omega t okay and minus sin omega into 0 which is sin of 0 which is 0 Okay, so I'm going to neglect that term. Uh, next, uh, we get R not plus V not t plus A not by omega t plus A not by omega square sine omega t. Now this is what we wanted, right? How the position of the electron is changing with time. and this is the a very very interesting result because you can see that the position of the electron is oscillating in time right just like our electric field and with the same frequency omega and not only it is oscillating but it is also moving forward with a constant velocity so this is a uh, oscillatory term oscillating and this is it is moving forward with a constant velocity you can see why because see from over here omega is a constant and a not is a i told you it has dimensions of acceleration into time is something like a velocity right that has a dimension of velocity and it is velocity the position of so how the position is going to change with time uh, if this is the electron right it is going to move forward in time with this constant velocity and also oscillate so it will look something like this right it is oscillating and it is also moving forward in this direction with velocity a not t by omega and you should know that accelerating charges emit radiation and these kind of oscillations will also emit radiations right and what do i mean by radiation they are going to emit so this is going to radiate which means it is going to emit photons or it is going to emit light right so this oscillating electron moving forward in time is going to emit light right and any such a uh, uh, acceleration which is changing with time if a charged particle is accelerating and its acceleration is changing in time in this manner its position is changing with time in this manner it is going to radiate light and as you might have guessed from the title of this video this is how the auroras are caused in the north pole so this is how the auroras are caused in general right and can you see this phenomenon is so beautiful we have combined our knowledge of both classical mechanics as well as classical electrodynamics to solve the problem and and we have actually reached the desired answer that oscillating charges over here a charge which is oscillating in time and moving forward with a constant velocity is just going to radiate light and which we can see as the beautiful auroras also known as the northern lights 
so that's it guys in this video i wanted to explain to you the physics behind the one of the most beautiful phenomenon of nature which is the auroras i hope you like the video see you in the next one